All right, one thing I want to look at is um, uh, looking into that top of the part value and the, or, or uh, I, I think of it as the toolpath calculation depth uh, value in the process and some of the ramifications of it, uh, some of the things you need to be aware of. Uh, remember that whatever that level is, that is the level on the tool. When the tool's at cutting depth, that's at that depth on the tool, that's what's going to ride the geometry. So what I want to do, uh, very early on, one of the very first parts I programmed at Gibbs, I scrapped because I didn't understand that, that how that worked. And I want to kind of duplicate that here, uh, what I did. I had a part that had a pocket that had a radius in the bottom. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, I'm going to create a couple of tools here. I'm going to create a half inch flat end mill that I'm going to use to rough this with. And uh, well, that's good enough. Uh, all right, so we use that to rough it with, and I'm going to come back with a half inch ball mill to generate a quarter inch radius between the wall and the floor. Um, so I'm going to kind of do this, you know, the way that I used to do it, uh, uh, which is I'm going to rough this thing out. Speeds and fees I'm not going to worry about. Uh, I'm going to go three quarter inch deep, and I'm going to leave uh, 260 thousandths island stock, 260 thousandths pocket stocks. That's going to stop a quarter inch away from each of these. Actually, I changed my mind. Uh, let me go, uh, I'm going to leave a quarter inch Z stock, and I'm going to leave 15 here and 15 here. Okay. Um, so that's going to be there and there. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this. I don't know what kind of weirdness is going on. Oh, I think, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I meant to copy and paste. I duplicated the geometry. Sorry, I'm still thinking about my adventures at the hotel a little while ago. Okay, so this one's going to pocket it down, um, uh, stopping a quarter inch shy of three quarter deep. This one, I'm going to go all the way down, but I'm going to stay a quarter inch off the walls. And we're going to do it. Um, now, the only thing here is I don't really need to cut. Uh, well, I can do that in one step would be fine. But I could also have this thing start at... Uh, that be uh, sorry, half inch deep. Why well, I'm shook up from that argument. All right, uh, so so we're not having a helix all the way through all of that stuff. Uh, all right, and my helix is kind of I don't know how that got set incorrectly. Let me go back into my helix because something seems to be really goofy about that. Every okay, uh, I know what happened here. I reset everything back to um, back to. Uh, back to the defaults. That'll work. I just noticed that that helix was awfully steep looking. calculate. That uh, looks much better. All right, and so what that gives me is, uh, apparently I pulled one of my, uh, pulled one of these out. Okay, so uh, what that gives me is essentially a quarter by quarter step at the bottom of this thing. And I did not save the interface that I did before. Uh, let's search for okay, 
again, I'm not using my interface, so thanks for how we're here. All right, so what that does is it leaves me this step here. Um, so I cut down as far as the straight wall is and cut over as far as the flat floor is. This is going to be a quarter inch radius. Um, so I'm going to bring that down and do a contour with it. Uh, I'm going to give it a fairly decent uh, entry exit move to, pull, to, to keep it away from this wall. Uh, now, the the mistake is in deciding that I want this thing to wrap it down close. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell the top of the parts at minus 0.7. So it's only got 50 thousandths to feed in the Z before it gets to depth. Um, and I'm gonna select, you know, I'm, I'm just gonna redo this. And what's gonna happen See how far that tool is cutting into that? Yeah, a lot more than 15 thousandths. And what's happening there is if I turn my geometry on, we can definitely see this is the pocket. This is what we're cutting, and it's way inside of that. And then the island's going to be the same way. What what we basically said here is that whatever part of the tool, when this thing is, when the tip of the tool is three quarters deep, whatever part of the tool is at 700 deep, that's going to cut over so that it's directly below this geometry. So it's in line with this geometry. And since this is not, you know, this is 50 thousandths from the tip, it has not reached the tangency or the side of the tool, that part of the tool is overcutting. So we've got two choices here. There's two ways to remedy this. The first way is to simply let it, uh, uh, you know, put this, the radius of the tool above. So if we recalculate that, and then you can see this tool is cutting to the correct location. The other way to remedy this, if you really, you know, if you're doing a very high volume of parts, you really need this to wrap it down to minus seven, 700, um, then make this a square end mill temporarily and calculate the tool path. The tool path will be correct and then we just change this back to a ball mill and don't recalculate tool path. And that will cut correctly even wrapping down 700 because the tool path was calculated with a tool that didn't have the radius. But the center of that tool, the center of the tip, that tool is in the right place because it's the same diameter. Uh, and then I just, you know, change this back to a ball mill so it renders the way that it's going to be on the machine. Uh, it, it's, it's basically lying to to the software yeah. to get to get the results that you need. But uh, the if you leave this as a ball mill. This number has to be the radius of the tool or more above that number for the tool for the edge of the tool to ride this huh. this shape here. Now so you can go to minus 0.5. Right, that would be the furthest we could go if we leave that as a ball mill. Uh, now the the advantage of this is it makes dealing with form tools, chamfering tools, tapered end mills, anything like that, it's very, very easy to hit exactly where you need that tool path to be. There's no guesswork involved. Um, you know, I remember with SmartCam and MasterCam both having to play with you know my stock amounts to, to try to get the tools to, to cut what I wanted them to. Here, there's no guesswork to it. You just, you know what part of the tool you want to be cutting this shape, that that size, and you set this to the Z level that that part of the tool is going to be at when the tip of the tool is that deep, and it goes exactly where it needs to go. I'm not grasping that. Why it does that? Well, it's. I mean, it's a. Uh, it's a result of the way that Gibbs gives you complete control over the tool path. Uh, again, if, you know, if I've got a tapered end mill or, or no matter how compli 
complicated the shape of the tool is, if I know the Z level, of, if I know where the part of the tool is that needs to be cutting this size and this shape, um, wherever that part of the tool is when the tool is at the bottom of the cut, if I put that number here, then that, that part of the tool is going to ride that geometry. So it overcut it by 100,000? No, it overcut it. I, it, it. What what it did, and let's actually look at what it actually did. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go to a different work group. Uh, clear that out. Clear that out. Okay, so what we had is we had a... Um, let's just do this. Uh, okay, so you know, just imagine that we're looking s sideways onto this is a wall and this is the floor of a pocket, and what we had is we had a quarter inch radius cutter in there, like this. Okay, so this is the end of our ball end mill where, when it's in cutting position. But what we did is we told it to um, um, we we set the toolpath calculation height a hundred thousand or fifty thousandths above this. So if I create a point at that location right here, and I draw th this is what we wanted. What we got was this. The tools touching bottom, but it's intersecting our geometry. And this is like this is this is Z going down this way. Remember, we're looking at the edge of it. So the top of the part is up here, and this is the floor of the pocket. We told it to put the tool on the geometry fifty thousandths above the floor. So it's just touching in line with the geometry here. So this is how much it's overcutting on the wall. And I just I'd have to measure that to see. Uh, what that is. So we yeah, hundred thousandths exactly. Okay. Your your your, your mental you math was it, better than mine. Yeah, if you dropped it down the rapid to seven fifty, it would cut one point five over. So if you know that, you can tell it. If you, I mean, if you just absolutely you're running production and you want that tool to wrap down to point seven. Tell it to leave a hundred on yeah. the wall. Yeah, you could do that as well. Yep. Try that real quick. You don't mind. No, not a bit. I just got carrying. Sorry about No, that's a metal block. <laughs> but I mean, if that works, then I understand. I'm not sure what's. My, my computer is acting very strange at the moment. Uh, buttons are not, our shortcuts are not working. Uh, again, I, I guess it's the do of the video. But uh, let me go back to this work group and we will load this back in. We will leave that as a ball mill. We'll leave this doing this and we will leave 100,000 stock. And we will run that. That looks like it's just about dead on it. Yeah, within the tolerances that I have set for my rendering.